Today, I'm going to be making something simple and delicious. Hi, I'm Daryl Smith. Welcome to my channel. On this channel, I mostly homebrew and share with you my experiences of the hobby. So I feel like I've made quite a lot of relatively complicated beers recently. You know, I've been throwing orange in, I've been using quite a lot of different grains, I've been making dark beers, and I just want to try and make a simple beer. This one was actually brewed just before Christmas as well and so it was a good one to drink with friends uh, around the festive period if you can remember that time. And so in this video I'm going to be making a pale ale using Bramling Cross hops. It's one of the more fruity hops in um, British beer and um, it's absolutely delicious. It's got blackberry and lemon notes. I'm quite a big fan of the hops and you, you don't see them all that often, so it's really nice to brew with them. The recipe that I'm gonna be following in this video is actually inspired by the apartment brewer's recipe where he did a simple pale ale and uh, you can watch that video here. Really worth a watch and checking out the other videos on his channel. He's absolutely brilliant. Really helped me when I was first setting up brewing as he really specializes in having not very much space when you're brewing, uh, which I don't have either. So anyway, now that you know all that, let's get to brewing. Using Beersmith Free's water profile tool, I chose the Hoppy Water Profile and adjust my tap water using Epson and Gypsum. Water profiles from your tap water vary massively depending on your provider, so check your provider's website and learn about your water. Along with the salts, I added half a Camden tablet and left it for 30 minutes to allow the chlorine to leave the water. Then I started heating the water to my target temperature of 72 degrees. Whilst I was waiting for the water to heat up, I measured out my grains, which was 5 kilograms of Maris Otter as the base malt, along with 450 grams of Vienna malt for colour and flavour. I also added 90 grams of Crystal malt because I had a little bit left from a previous brew. I then prepared my hop additions, which were all Brambly Cross. I prepared four 30 gram hits of the hop. They went into the brew at 30, 20, 15 and 10 minutes before the end of the boil. I also had a final hop addition of 70 grams at flame out. The full recipe is in the description. If you're enjoying this video, then please do hit the subscribe button and let me know in the comments what's the best single hopped pale ale you've ever made. Once the water was up to temp, I added my grain bag and grains, stirring regularly to stop clumping. The grains reduced the water's temperature to my target mash temperature of 67 degrees. I used a thick blanket to help avoid too much heat loss and then gave the grains a good stir 30 minutes into the mash. After 30 more minutes, I checked the temperature again and then started stirring for 15 minutes so to maximize my mash's efficiency. I then drained the grain bag, squeezed it and left it to drip for 15 minutes whilst I got the wort boiling. I also poured boiling water over the bag to help get more sugars out. Once the wort was rolling, it was time to start the 30 minute boil. I began to follow my hop routine and at 15 minutes I added my copper cooling coil so to sanitize it. 10 minutes before the end, I added Irish moss to make the final beer clearer and yeast nutrient so to set off a healthy fermentation. At flame out, I added my final hops and dropped the temperature to 80 degrees and then started a 15 minute hop stand. When the time was up, I got my wort to 40 degrees Celsius and added it to my fermenter, allowing some splashing to help add oxygen. Finally, it was time to add my Kvike Foss yeast and after a bit of a shake, I put it onto a heat pad and left it to ferment for a week before bottling. I really enjoyed that brew day. Um, I love doing 30 minute boils. They just really make the whole brew day feel a lot quicker. I, I didn't label these bottles um, because Charlotte was ill at the time when I bottled these and she pretty much refused to label them for me and I'm not gonna label them because I have such bad handwriting. Um, anyway, uh, she's all right now. She, she didn't have COVID, then she did get COVID uh, but th that's not important. She's all right. It's been bottled for a couple of months now. Um, I've not actually had one in a few weeks. I drank most of them around Christmas and New Year's and then realized that I needed to film this video. Then I got COVID and then had to wait until I'd got over COVID so that I could then taste this. So it's been a while. 
um, and there are only three bottles left. Uh, this is one of them. Uh, I've been waiting for my taste to come back so that I could film this video. Uh, so I'm hoping that um, I've got enough taste to actually be able to taste this. If not, um, well, I probably won't put this video out. So if you're watching this video, you know that I can taste. <laughs> Oh, well, first off, smell wise, you get plenty of the Kvike Voss yeast um, that has got quite a um, powerful character when it comes to beer. So quite often you can smell it if it's in it. A lemony blackberry smell, I would say that. So once you've read that a hop is meant to be lemony and blackberry, -y, then you try and find that in it. So I'm trying to, I'm trying to not search for it. Certainly a fruity smell. Let's give it a taste. Yeah, blackberries. Really blackberry. <laughs> really blackberry. Um, yeah, um, I haven't spoken yet about the colour. Well, look at that colour. It's the clearest beer that I've ever made. So clear to have a beer like this brewed with Kvike Voss. I'd have been interested to have dry hopped this maybe. I, I didn't dry hop, um, but this probably would have benefited from a dry hop, but I just wanted to make a clear beer. Really proud of how that head's holding. Look at that. It's a very attractive beer. Probably, I'm gonna say this is the most attractive beer that I've ever made, certainly of pails. I feel like some of my other pails have been a bit more murky, maybe, um, but this is beautifully clear. Yeah, blackberries. Uh, I'm not, I don't know if I'm getting much lemon. I smell lemon. Blackberries seem to be the dominant taste. I think it's very drinkable, very easy drinking. I feel like single hot pails can quite often be very drinkable. There's not like a complicated evolution, a bit more one note. I think it, it comes across as the most uh, professional looking beer I think I've made. I, I've not made it before, but I feel like Bramley Cross could be really nice in a stout. Um, you know, stouts can ha work really well with quite of like dark fruit kind of flavors, you know, cherry, the cherry stout's really nice. So maybe a Bramling Cross um, stout could be delicious. Or even maybe a black IPA, go bigger on the hops. Uh, I'd be really interested to try that with this hop. I, I really like it. I certainly think that the malt bill here is probably going to be my go-to for a long while now when I'm doing just simple pails. I think I can get really excited so often when I'm reading about different recipes and watching different videos, I'm like, oh my God, I've got to try making a double IPA. I've got, oh, maybe a triple IPA. Uh, although my brewing uh, gear probably couldn't handle a triple at the moment. But you, you get so bogged down, you're like, oh, maybe I should start trying to use fruit in my beers. And that you get so excited. Uh, and then you forget that actually keeping it simple can result in your best beers. When you're doing simpler beers, it's much harder to hide bad brewing. So it's a really good way to learn and spot um, mistakes that you might be making in the brew. So I think it's really important to quite often try and make a simple beer and not overdo it with adjuncts and specialty malts. Just keep it simple. I feel like I'm getting better at water treatment and water pro using water profiles. My tap water is very minerally. Uh, and it works so well with dark beers, but you know, pales, you've got to work very hard to make them taste nice. You know, hops don't particularly like hard water. So making a pail in a place with hard water and making it good is a good way of learning lots of brewing practices is what I'm trying to say uh, in <laughs> as many words as possible, but it seems of it. Anyway, thank you so much for watching this video. Uh, let me know what's your favorite um, hop that you use in a simple pail, or maybe there's a hop combination that you really like. Don't make it too complicated. I, I'm talking about one or two hops together. Thank you so much for watching this video. I really enjoyed brewing this beer. I've got loads of other beers on the way. I'm thrilled that I'm able to properly taste this uh, after COVID as I haven't drank much beer recently and I was starting to worry that maybe I can't taste it anymore, but I can taste Black Breeze. I'm meant to taste Black Breeze. So I'm thrilled. <laughs> uh, thank you so much for watching this video and uh, I'll see you on the next one. Cheers.